this video we're going to introduce the concept of seventh chords and uh, take a look at the inversions of the seventh chords. There are many kinds of seventh chords. Um, we're going to call the first kind uh, major seven and um, I'm going to build all of these on the root of C. So this will be a C major seven and um, we're going to start by describing these uh, first by the triad at the bottom, the snowman if you will, and then the quality of the seventh. So this is called a major seven, has a major triad on the bottom, and then it has a major seven up top. Sometimes it's called a major major, but generally it's just referred to as a uh, major triad, so C major uh, seven uh, chord. Let's build what's called a dominant seven, and that's a major triad on the bottom, but a minor seven up top. So there's our major triad, just like we had before, but instead of a B, we're going to put a B flat. So with that minor seven on top of a major triad, we call this a dominant seven, and um, technically uh, it's a C major minor seven, you know, major triad minor seven. Okay, this next one is just usually called a minor seven. It has a minor triad and then a minor seven up top. So there's the minor triad and there's the minor seven, and um, you might call it a a minor minor seven, but it's mostly uh, called a, a just a minor seven, just like um, the previous one uh, with the major triad and the minor seven is mostly just called a dominant seven because that's that's what a dominant seven looks like. Okay, the next one is a half diminished seven, so we have a diminished triad down on the bottom. Here it would be C E flat G flat. There's our diminished triad, and then we have a minor seven on top B flat. So this is. Uh, called a half diminished seven chord. All right, so first we had a, a C major seven chord, then a C major minor seven, usually called just a dominant seven, then C minor minor seven, usually just called a, a minor seven. In fact, the chord um, uh, lingo would usually not have two M's, just one, okay? And then, um, and now a C half diminished seven. So that circle with a slash through it, that is the symbol for half diminished. All right, and then finally a fully diminished seven chord, usually just called a diminished seven chord, uh, would have the diminished triad on the bottom, but then it would have a diminished seven on top. So there's our diminished triad, there's our diminished seven on the top. So this one would just have a plain circle, fully diminished seven. So the the uh, five forms here we have uh, major seven, that's a major triad on the bottom major seven on top. A dominant seven has the major triad on the bottom and the minor seven on the top. The minor seven has the minor triad on the bottom and the minor seven on the top. The half diminished seven has a diminished triad on the bottom, minor seven on top. And then the fully diminished has a diminished triad on the bottom and diminished seven. I guess another way to look at these um, uh, diminished ones is the intervals between each uh, chord member. You have a minor third, minor third, and major third. For the half diminished seven, you have a minor third, minor third, and minor third for the fully diminished seven. Well, I'm going to ask you to spell them, uh, those of you working along with this video. Uh, so I'm going to give you a root, and then I want you to pause the video and on your own, maybe on your own manuscript paper, try to write the complete um, uh, seventh chords. Hey, all of these are in root position so far. Just write them in root position. And then uh, let the video roll and see if you get it. But let's do everything, um, instead of on a C like we did on the last screen, let's do everything on a root of F. So what I'm asking you to do is write yourself uh, an F you know, major 7, then an F dominant 7, then an F, oh, I'm sorry, an F minor 7. Let me write that. F minor 7, then an F half diminished 7, and then an F fully diminished 7. So go ahead and pause the video, write your answers, and then when you return, I'll fill in the blanks. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the blanks. The F major 7 would have a major triad, and then a major 7. The F dominant 7 would also be a major triad, but it would have a minor 7 on the top. The minor, the F minor seven would have a minor triad and a minor seven on top. The half diminished seven would have a diminished triad, and then it would have a minor seven on top. 
and the fully diminished 7 would have a diminished triad, but also have a diminished 7 on top. Hope you did well. All right, we're going to continue to talk about seventh chords in inversion, and here we're going to list um, uh, below uh, the chords, and you're going to see that the first one is a root position chord. It's just seven. By the way, seven five three is actually the full version of that, but usually we just see seven. So I'm going to put in red the full version, and uh, but you only are required to put what's in black. All right, so for um, in the key of B flat, a dominant. 7 would be spelled on F, so we're part writing these rather than just writing them on a single staff. I'm going to put our root F, and let's uh, put the uh, C, the fifth, in the tenor, and uh, let's give the alto an E flat, that's the seventh of the chord, and then, whoops, and then the uh, soprano, the A. So that would be an example of uh, this triad, the dominant triad, in root position. Now, let's take those same notes, F, A, C, E flat, and put it in first inversion. That would be with uh, the third in the bass, that's the first inversion. And 6-5 uh, is actually uh, all that's necessary, but it technically is 6-5-3. Okay, uh, that's the first inversion. And now that A is in the bass, we, we still need the other notes, um, so I'm going to keep the C here. And I'm going to put the um, F in the soprano, and the E flat in the alto. And so uh, that's just one of many ways to part right the um, the first inversion. So here's root position, here's first inversion, and this next triad is 4-3, uh, that is the um, second inversion, and it's really technically 6-4-3, but usually 4-3 is all that's required. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put a C in the bass, that would be the fifth of the dominant. Um, let's put the F in the alto, let's put the uh, A in the soprano and the E flat in the tenor. So for instance, that would be one of uh, many different ways you could have part written the uh, second inversion. And same chord, F, A, C, E flat, let's do the dominant for two, which would be the uh, third inversion. And six for two would be the full version of the, uh, the third inversion. So I need to have an E flat, that's the seventh of the chord in the bass, I'm going to go back to having a C in the tenor. Uh, I need an F and an A. Let's uh, you know keep the F here and keep the A here. All right, so that's an example of a third inversion of all the same chord, right? So every every chord I just wrote was F A C E flat, but here I did it in root position. Here I did it in first inversion. Here I did it in second inversion. Here I did it in third inversion. All right, the next chord I'd like to write is a leading tone. Uh, diminished uh, seven chord, and um, although this is in B flat major, so it's technically just going to be a half diminished. The chord will be built on uh, the root of A, and then we'll go up a third to C, then up a third to E flat, and then up a third to G. So uh, this isn't actually fully diminished. It would have to be G flat to be fully diminished. But it's in first inversion because of the figure six five. So. What needs to be in the bass is actually the, uh, the C, the third of the chord. So I'm going to go ahead and put that C in the bass. And let's give the tenor the root of the chord, the A. And let's give the uh, alto, the E flat, and the soprano, the G. So that would be an example of um, a leading tone chord, uh, seventh chord, and in this case in first inversion. All right, so I have a couple uh, bass notes with figures below it. I want to see if you can figure it out. We'll do the same thing. I'll give you a moment uh, to pause the video, complete your answers on a sheet of manuscript paper. Then you can return to the video and see if you got it right. I want to just remind you that the slash, like we have here and here, right? the slash through a number means raise it a half step. It is the same as if there was a sharp or a natural in front of uh, the six, meaning raise it a half step. So the sharp or the raised um, interval is the one with the slash through it. So we'll have to, when we're doing these, make sure that whatever is a fourth above the C is going to be raised a half step, and whatever is a sixth above this A is going to be raised a half step. Oh, and also whatever is a fourth above this C will be raised a half step. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, 
complete uh, the voicings of the seventh chord for the missing tenor, alto, and soprano. Then when you return to the video, I'll provide the answers. Before you start, let's um, put the uh, key here too. Uh, let's call this G minor because of the F sharp that you see uh, and the two flats, it'll be in G minor. Okay, so go ahead. Alrighty, so this first one here, 6-5 um, is the first inversion. The way I figure out with first inversions, if I want to know what the root is, I just go down a third. And that always tells me with the first inversion what the root is. So the root here is going to be D, and the key of G minor, D is the dominant. So this is a dominant 6-5. Okay, well, we need a D somewhere. We need a F sharp. We already have the F sharp. We need an A and we need a C. And um, well, let's give the, uh, could do, be very simple about it, and give the A to the tenor the C to the alto, and the D to the soprano. So that's that's just one way of doing it. There's there's a lot of ways you could have done it. For instance, um, just give you one more possible solution. Could give the D to the tenor, and the um, A to the alto, and the C to the soprano. And we're gonna go on to this next chord, which 4-2 is the third inversion. And uh, the way I figure out with 4-2 is the root of it is always just a step above it. That is the seventh in the bass, the C. So the step above it is D. So this is another dominant uh, chord, dominant 4-2. And uh, we're going to have to make sure whatever is a fourth above the bass, we uh, raise a half step. Let's do that now. The um, fourth above the bass is F. And I'm going to put it in the alto, but we're going to make it F sharp because of that slash. Um, Right, the slash through the four means raise it a half step. So F sharp. And um, let's give the A to the tenor and the D the root of the chord to the soprano. So that'd be one way of doing that. That's a nice open position. Okay, the next one is a six five. So again we're gonna go down a third. And we get F. Oh, so this is not going to be a dominant chord. This is going to actually be um, a leading tone. Now, the reason I know it's a leading tone and not a subtonic is the 6 has a slash through it. Um, a 6th above A is F sharp. So F sharp is actually the root of the chord here. And uh, let me put the uh, F sharp in the, well, we can put it right where I just had it, actually. Um, put it in the alto. That's the root of the chord. Then we have an A in the bass. Uh, we also need a C and an E flat. Let's put the C in the soprano and the E flat in the tenor. All right, and that, again, that's one of many different ways that we could have voiced that. So this is not a dominant chord. This is a leading tone. And it is a diminished um, and it's a 6-5. Um, and last one here, 4-3 uh, is a second inversion, so we're going to go down two-thirds or down a fifth to figure out, you know, you can either go down two-thirds and we get, you know, another F, or you can just go down a fifth right away and you're going to get an F. Uh, that's how you figure out what the root of a 4-3 chord is. Uh, and uh, that means, uh, and because of the slash through the 4, right, whatever's a fourth above the C, which would be F, Right, F is going to be raised to half step F sharp. Although I don't want to put the F sharp that low in the tenor. Let's put the F sharp. Um, let's see, bass is on C. Let's put the F sharp again in the. You know, what, let's put it in the soprano this time. We'll do that. So there's the sharp four, and then um, the three will be in E flat. I'm going to put that in the alto. And all we need is an A for the tenor. There it is. Okay, so again, one of other possible ways that you could have done that. Anyway, I hope you got it right. I'm going to go ahead and put my chord symbol here. That is a dominant 4-3. And uh, that's part writing 7th chords.